Hello there, Mad Mike here, and welcome back to the channel. Uh, so today uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the Avengers Endgame trailer uh, that dropped today. Uh, but before we do that, uh, I would again like to uh, plug the book uh, Comic Book Hero, which is on Indiegogo. It is a uh, young adult slash child comic book, um, and it's mainly aimed for the younger audience. So, I mean, if you want to buy a copy, more power to you. Uh, if you have uh, a child, a grandchild, a niece or a nephew, or somebody that uh, young that you think might want to read it, uh, then you know, pick up a copy for them. It is well worth your money and well worth your time. And uh, as usual, I will link the book in the description. Uh, I will not be advertising this during the uh, Journey to Endgame videos. Um, just because I'm going to be putting those on a playlist and it would kind of seem weird if I was advertising it or somebody watched it weeks and weeks and weeks later. Um, but let, let's get into the trailer a little bit and I'm going to skip past most of it because a lot of it is just stuff that we've already seen. Uh, but I will mention uh, a few key things and I will get to the, the real big reason why I'm covering this is because, uh, you know, we get our first look at, uh, other than the Captain Marvel, uh, post credit scene, we get our first look at Captain Marvel in uh, the current MCU and in Endgame. So, uh, first of all, let's just go over and say that uh, this movie has a bit of a scope uh, in terms of uh, how the time frame in which it takes place, because we do see uh, characters uh, change over the course of the film. Now, um, specifically Black Widow, and you can see this in the trailer. So, at the in some of the scenes in the trailer, you see that she has the blonde hair like she did in Infinity War. Um, and there's only a few glimpses of it, but you can see it. There's one in the Captain Marvel scene when, when Thor and Captain Marvel are kind of uh, eye eyeballing each other. But um, there, after that, you see her with her red hair again. But you see that she has kind of uh, blonde ends almost, uh, and her hair has grown quite longer uh, since the... Uh, since we last saw her in Infinity War. So you can assume that at least a, a decent amount of time has gone by in terms of maybe months. Um, and I'm not, I'm not sure how many, uh, how long it would take for your hair to grow that long, maybe uh, three or four months, something like that. I wouldn't say any more than six months. Um, but it does show that there is a progression. Uh, we get some, uh, some footage of uh, Hawkeye being with his family. And uh, apparently it's been clarified. There is a scene where he's showing uh, a little girl or not a little girl, but a, a young girl, uh, how to sh how to shoot a bow, and she hits the target, and he congratulates her. That's his daughter. Uh, that is not Kate Bishop from the comic books. That is uh, his daughter. Although they might try and do that uh, if he doesn't survive uh, the film, they might be setting up for that. Which look, as long as they write it, as long as they write it good, I'm I'm fine with it. And they've introduced the character now to some extent, so I can kind of live with that. And again, they're not not that they're gonna. If you were gonna give Hawkeye a solo film, you would have given Jeremy Renner a solo film by now, which I think probably would have been interesting. But uh, they're not gonna have like a solo Kate Bishop movie. You know, she'd probably just show up in event or uh, not Kate Bishop, but uh, Hawkeye's uh, daughter. I forget her first name. Uh, whatever first name is Barton, um, you know, they wouldn't give her a solo movie over Jeremy Renner, I don't think, that would be kind of insane, uh, but I, I would feel that she would show up in Avengers movies if they did decide to go that route, but, uh, you know, we move past that, and we kind of see some other stuff, we see a bit of uh, some updated looks for some of the characters, War, Machi War Machine's armor looks amazing, that thing looks like a tank, and see, here's the thing is that, as time has gone on, War Machine has progressively started to look more and more different than Iron Man, which is good. Iron Man's suit is kind of supposed to be kind of a streamlined version. It's not supposed to be extremely heavily armored, but it's more advanced. Whereas War Machine is supposed to be like a flying tank, and he really looks like that now. And I'm really excited about that, because there is such a drastic look and difference between the two characters now, instead of just looking like a, a gray and and uh, a gray and black Iron Man suit with some extra weapons tagged onto it. It looks really different, and I love that. Um, we do also get to see that uh, Tony Stark and Nebula do make it back to Earth somehow. They, again, they don't explain this. Uh, which is good because, you know, you do need to leave stuff for the movie. Uh, but they do show a scene where they're all together, so they do show that, that those who do make it back to Earth uh, somehow, you know, they don't just die in space. Um, we don't really see Thanos at all in the trailer, which is fine. You know, he he's really kind of... Uh, he's almost like a MacGuffin at this point because they're, they're, they're trying to change something that he's already done. Infinity War was like his 
his stepping forward point. You know, he was kind of front and center for a lot of that film. Uh, so that's kind of what that is. And then we do get the shot of all the Avengers together in their, uh, what is their yeah, quote-unquote quantum realm suits, uh, where they show that they're about to go into the quantum realm and, and do some stuff uh, in order to, you know, defeat Thanos. And we see them all in the suits now, as opposed to uh, before, where uh, I think the only shots we had of them in the suits were uh, just, you know, pulls from uh, early toys and stuff like that that were going to be coming out in relation to the film. Uh, but now we, we kind of skip ahead, and we're going to skip ahead to uh, the the meat of this, which is uh, you know the the whole monologues that are over. And again, they kind of sh they show the flashbacks uh, to some of the previous films. They show the flashbacks to um, Captain America: The First Avenger, the first Iron Man, the first Thor, uh, and they kind of just go over uh, you know the previous parts of the MCU and, and all this stuff. And it's supposed to be symbolic, uh, and it works very well in the monologue very good. But <laughs> here's the thing: we hear a monologue from Peggy Carter of all characters, which is you know it's kind of interesting that they chose that character, but it works. And uh, we actually see what is what has been speculated to be, I don't know 100% of it is, but it's her funeral with Captain America as a pallbearer. Because um, she is uh, she is elderly uh, at this point in the timeline, and I, she would be in her 90s or close to 100 um, at this point. And they do show that I believe she has either dementia or Alzheimer's, uh, one of the two, uh, in, uh, I believe it's Captain America, the Winter Soldier, is when they show that. Uh, but it's, uh, it, it, it's an interesting kind of... Uh, kind of thing to choose, but it fits very well uh, in the idea. And they do show some scenes of what looks like to be a quote-unquote final battle. They show uh, Captain America, Nebula, and uh, Ant-Man running through like all these debris, all this debris and stuff. It looks really cool. Um, and uh, really, that covers the first probably 95% of the trailer, but we're going to kind of dive into the last 5% of the trailer. And I'm going to go into a bit of a... Uh, a monologue about this that doesn't have so much to do with the footage as possibly what could be happening between Endgame and Captain Marvel. And look, again, I haven't seen Captain Marvel yet. I plan on seeing it tomorrow so I can do my uh, Journey to Endgame video on Saturday. Uh, so, you know, bear with me on that. But th this is just speculation on my part of uh, some things. So from, from all that I've heard, because I have heard not good things about the movie, obviously, um, is that, uh, you know, Carol Danvers is very wooden in the film. She doesn't, she doesn't act very well in the film. And uh, it, it doesn't, you know, really Sam Jackson's the one that kind of carries the film forward. That, that's all that I've heard. Again, I haven't seen the film. I'm going by what I've heard at this point. So, you know, don't, don't jump on me for it. But the the thing is, is that one scene that they show with Thor, and it is cut. You can tell it's cut because um, the in the and if you watch the trailer, you know what I mean. Is that you you see the scene? They're looking at each other. They're kind of in like a stare down. Thor puts his hand out and he brings Stormbreaker to him, and then afterwards he says, "I like this one." Um, and but the, the the difference is is he brings Stormbreaker to him, and then they switch over to the the line where he says, "I like this one." But then when when that happens, you see him put Stormbreaker in front of him, kind of rest his hand on the on the top of the hammer, using it almost like a crutch, and then smiling. So the hammer immediately went from one position to another, which means there was some kind of a cut in there uh, where there was dialogue that was obviously not put into the trailer, uh, and it was cut that way specifically. But he, here's the thing: is that in that scene. I actually, uh, Brie Larson was not terrible, you know, that little kind of smirk that she gets in, in there when she's having the stare down with Thor, and, uh, you know, when he brings Stormbreaker to him, and, and keep in mind, that this is kind of a thing, and then Thor, Chris Hemsworth is Thor, his reaction, uh, I, I find very, uh, very funny, just because, and look, people are going to say, like, oh, this is, this is them trying to endorse Captain Marvel for Endgame, and Thor, Thor approves, and all that stuff. Look, Thor is one of the most powerful Marvel characters in the MCU period. I mean, he, he might be the most powerful superhero in the MCU. We saw him almost defeat the Hulk single-handedly in Thor Ragnarok. And uh, he almost single-handedly killed Thanos. I think with Stormbreaker, he literally is the most powerful character, uh, well, not character, but the most powerful superhero in the MCU. And obviously that, ecl that eclipses Carol Danvers as well. But the point is, is that he is so extremely powerful and it's not 
you know, he doesn't have, not every day somebody walks up to Thor Odinson and stares him down. And, you know, when, when you see him say, I like this one, it's less that he is a, uh, approving from a point of view that he thinks that she is an equal. Uh, it is more of him approving to the fact that she had the guts to actually stare him down, knowing that he could mop the floor with her. It's not. It's not the. the it's not what the, what people are trying to make it out to be uh, from the film. Now, the the trailer might be trying to convey that, but in the film, I think they'll probably explain it a little bit differently, where you can tell because of Thor's attitude, it's not like he's not going to say she's as strong as him. He doesn't even say that Sif or, or anybody else from the from the Thor universe is as strong as him. He just simply laughs it off. Uh, but, but, you know, it's kind of a, it's a playful thing, uh, which I think is uh, very in, in due to what Thor's character is at this point, because he's evolved from the from the first Thor film where he's kind of the fiery youth to now he's kind of the, the wise journeyman uh, in a sense where he's, he's uh, older and he is wiser and he kind of knows when, when to fight and when to not. And obviously he wasn't just going to, you know, bash Carol Danvers over the head with the hammer, you know, but it was meant to prove a point and to see like, you know, okay, what are you going to do when I have, you know, the death weapon that I, I forged out of a dying star in my hand. Um, and, uh, you know, she she stared him down. Like I said, again, it doesn't mean that Carol Danvers is nearly as strong as Thor because she's not. It means that Thor was testing her to see to testing her metal essentially, whether or not she was willing to stand up or or back down, and she didn't, which is why he laughed. But the but the point is is that it, it doesn't matter how that fight would have turned out because Thor would have beaten the living crap out of her. Um in that scenario but we kind of move past that into and, and this is this is why I, I bring this up is because you look at the people that wrote captain marvel you look at the people that directed it which actually were the same people uh plus a few writers uh but you look at them and, and you you look at you know the actors are the people that had to carry that movie but the, here's the thing if you have a bad director and you have a bad writer an actor can't salvage that in a lot of cases. And Sam Jackson, uh, from what I understand, had a few moments in that movie where he kind of shined through, but it was probably him ad-libbing um, and then just letting him. Uh, but he here's the thing, is that you kind of look at uh, films like... Um, you look at After Earth, which was a film that was... Uh, I don't believe it was directed by M. Night Shyamalan, but I know that he... Actually, I can't remember if he directed it or not, but I know that he wrote it. And After Earth is Will Smith and Jaden Smith. Now, people are turned off by Jaden Smith at this point because they're like, okay, we're just aping off of his dad. But Will Smith is a legitimately liked actor. And that movie turned him into a wooden board uh, that was not compelling at all. And nobody liked him in that film. And that's why that film bombed terribly. Uh, in addition to the fact that, uh, you know, Jaden Smith was basically just as compelling as Will Smith was in that movie. But it goes to show that what poor directing and poor writing can do. It can turn an actor that people love and turn him into a mannequin they, they trot out in front of the camera for ticket sales. Um, and here's the difference. And that that's kind of what I think might make the difference here is that the people that directed Captain Marvel were not good at what they did. They, they did mostly indie movies before that. This is their first triple-A big-budget movie that any of those people had done. And I've looked on IMDb. I've seen their credentials. Their credentials are shit. They should not be working on that movie. They never should have been working on that movie. But they did, and they put it out, and it's getting criticized to living hell for it. But on the opposite side of the coin, now you have Endgame. And here's the thing. Anthony and Joe Russo are two directors that I trust. At this point, I trust them because they have made three really good MCU films in a row, and this will be and when this will be the fourth one. Hopefully, will be the fourth one with Endgame. Uh, and I think that as long as Marvel does not interfere with them on a studio level, as long as they allow them to do what they want to do, then I don't really have a problem with Captain Marvel in this movie. And that scene kind of proved it to me is the idea that, okay, you know, maybe with better directors and, and better writers and everything like that, Brie Larson cannot 
you know, won't be a, a piece of crap superhero who will ruin the MCU. And, you know, people, you, you can say that's me being an optimist. You can say that's me, you know, being an MCU fanboy, whatever. Uh, but that scene to me had so much, and I know it's only, it's only 20 seconds, probably not even 20 seconds, maybe like 10 seconds or 15 seconds. But that scene in particular gave me a little bit of faith that Anthony and Joe Russo can make that character into what she's supposed to be. And here's the thing. We've seen superheroes come off with lukewarm initial films. You know, the first Thor movie was not that good. I, I personally did not think it was that good. I thought the second one was actually worse. Uh, but I really, really liked Thor Ragnarok. And I know that, again, people are split on that movie. But I liked it. I felt the humor hit very well, even though, uh, you know, Thor is kind of the straight man, quote unquote. Um, I, I felt that it worked, and I think Chris, Chris Hemsworth has an affinity for comedy. And that's why, that's another reason why it probably worked. Uh, but again, you, you kind of see my point there is that I think Anthony and Joe Russo, if any directors out of the MCU are going to be able to make that character compelling and make that character good and be able to balance her out with the other Avengers and at the same time not, you know, not nerf her to the point of non-existence. Um, I think that Anthony and Joe Russo can do that. And I actually look forward to seeing what they do with that character. Uh, because th this is the other thing is that Kevin Feige appears to trust them because he's given them three movies and they've done outstanding in all three of those films. And again, this will be the fourth one. But... I trust Anthony and Joe Russo, and I think they might be able to turn this thing around. And if they are directly involved with what comes after Endgame, and I'm not 100% sure if they will be, but if they are directly involved with what comes after Endgame in terms of a, a production standpoint, uh, I do not fear for the future of the MCU uh, from a story perspective. Uh, because I think that as long as they are not checked by some politically driven corporate uh, or studio entity, that they will continue to make good content. And, uh, you know, again, you can disagree with me all you want. That's my interpretation of the end of that trailer and some of the stuff that happened in it. Uh, and, uh, you know, so it is what it is. But uh, thank you for listening. Uh, don't forget to leave a comment, uh, leave a like on the video, hit the bell for notifications, and uh, subscribe. And remember, I live my life free of compromise. Do you?